So really the most important thing in getting your beats to sound good is good sound selection. I know a lot of people say it, but it really is true. If you start with good sounds, your mixes are gonna sound good off simple things like leveling and maybe some slight EQ. So with that being said, shameless plug, I'm gonna leave my drum kit in the description and I guarantee you guys that it'll make your beats sound better. If you're not 100% happy with it, I'll send your money right back. So you gotta think about mixes, not only in top to bottom in terms of where your faders and levels are at, but front to back in terms of depth, that's gonna make your mixes be perceived as bigger. Left to right, how wide are your mixes? Are you panning things correctly? Do you have the instruments you should pan where they should be? So we're gonna to touch on all this stuff today and I wanna help you guys understand that it's a lot more than just something you do on your master or getting your levels right and some little EQ moves. It's some pretty simple stuff, but it'll make your mixes sound so much bigger and more full and add so much more energy overall. I've started offering a mixing service, but not only will I mix beats and master beats for you, but I offer a Discord after the fact to kind of walk you guys exactly through what I did because my goal is for you guys to learn and be able to apply the stuff that I'm doing back to your own mixes to level them up. So if getting your beat mixed by me is something you're interested in, shoot me an email. I'll take the time to mix it. I'll give you back the session, the stems, and a one-on-one -on -one hour long Discord showing you exactly what I did in the mix. When I'm initially making a beat and I just want a rough mix to bounce, I'm focusing on the energy. So that's exactly where this beat's at right now. It's all right, the mix is okay on it. It's leveled, it sounds pretty good. I bounced it and I heard a lot of stuff that I wasn't too happy with. It's another reason I definitely advise bouncing your mixes so that you can check them on your phone in your car and then circle back for a final mix after the fact. So I'm gonna play the intro and the hook for you guys and I'll walk you through exactly what I'm talking about in terms of just getting the energy right before I go in for a final mix. So this is where we're at right now. So on this beat, I only automated a low pass filter on the melody rather than on the master, which I'll do a lot of times, but I didn't really think it needed it. So I just automated this filter to cut off at 2000 Hertz. And you can see right here, based on this automation line right here, it fades in. So what I have it doing is when the beat drops originally, it's still 75% mm, of the way on. And then when it drops for the second half of the hook, it's all the way off. So all these high end, all this high end that's previously being cut off is completely out. And it just adds like a lot more energy to the second half of the hook so that they both sound unique. Another thing that I like doing in my beats, I like to make this knob a square on my 808s or any drum that you want to cut off sharp. So because I made it like that, you can see these little breaks here. It's gonna cut off the 808 and I think it just adds a lot more interest to it. I've really only done some things like leveling, some slight EQ, nothing crazy, nothing that I don't think you guys don't already know. That's kind of the basic stuff that I've already done to this in terms of mixing and also getting the levels right. So now I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth with it and hopefully show you guys some stuff you don't know to help your mixes sound a lot bigger and better. So the first thing I'm hearing is that the stereo image of the melody is just way too wide. It's doing a little bit too much and I kind of want it to sit not dead middle like a bass or anything, but I want it to sit just a little bit wider than the bass so that my drums, like my hi-hats that are panned hard left and right, you're gonna feel how wide those are relative to everything else. So if the melody's super wide and left bouncing back and forth, the drums aren't gonna feel that big and wide. So the easiest way to do this, I already had the stereo separation turned a little mono, but this knob right here, where you can see up in the left-hand corner it says 20% merged, I'm gonna turn it a little bit more to get the stereo image a little more centered. And to supplement some of that stereo image back that I just lost, I'm gonna click down here to send it to a reverb and I'm gonna let that reverb be a little bit wider. I could even turn this knob to give it more stereo image. 
And the difference here is that I'm EQing my reverb differently. So really in the reverb, I'm just leaving a lot of high end that I like out wide. Whereas my melody still has some low frequencies in it, like some 200 and 300 and stuff like that, that I want to be more down the middle. I'm going to have just as big of a feel, but the harmonics, like my low end of the melody is going to be more in the middle and just the ambient verb will be a little bit wider. So I'll show you when I throw this to the verb, the effect it adds, widening it. So that was the first thing I heard was that I didn't like the stereo imaging of the melody. So we centered it a little bit more. We threw it to a verb to keep it feeling wide, but really the only thing that's wide now is the ambience and the reverb. Okay, let's see what else I hear. Right away, I realized I never put my bass in mono. So my bass was kind of where my melody was. It was like a little bit wide. So I threw this knob on the bass all the way down the middle. So now the bass is going to be like the center point of my mix. Turn it down a tiny bit too. And there's some high end in the distortion I'm not crazy about. Like it sounds good because you can really hear the distortion, but it's kind of resonant and it's kind of a little too much. And a lot of times when I'm mixing now, I'm also thinking about where a vocal is going to sit. So I'm going to just cut out some of the high end of the distortion. You'll still be able to hear it through small speakers, but it's not going to be obnoxious and ripping out of the mix. So the snare is a little bit loud and I might do a couple other things to it. Let me see what it sounds like. I'm just playing with it right now to see if it sits better in the left or right of the mix. You'll find sometimes that you don't even, if you feel like the volume's close to being on and volume might not be the issue, if you put it left or right and just play with the panning of it or the stereo image of it, make it a little less wide, make it a little more stereo, stuff like that with drum sounds, you'll be able to get them to sit a lot better in a mix. The volume is not the only tool you have. So keep in mind things like stereo imaging, how wide a sound is or how narrow a sound is, panning the sound, um, adding depth to it from things like a reverb or a delay, stuff like that. So some I started to think about kind of recently is like every drum one shot that we use is recorded at like a certain tempo essentially. So this snare, if I hit this multi knob and I'm gonna hit this mode, I'm gonna hit E2 transient. So when I slow it down, it's not editing the pitch. You hear it's a little slower now or faster now. So that could be the issue too. It couldn't, maybe it's not volume. Maybe it's like the snare's a little too quick. So if I slow it down a little bit, I feel like it's gonna sound a lot better. Another thing you can use is pitch. So things that are pitched deeper, darker, will be perceived as further back in the mix. It might help you fit something in there a little bit better. I'm gonna solo the drums without the melody to see how they sound. So I turn the speed down a little bit of the clap. If you just have one hi-hat kind of driving the sound, if you pick hi-hats or manipulate samples using, using things like speed and pitch so they sound different, you could put one pretty hard left, this like 33%, and then I have this one like 30% to the right. So these two playing off each other. And you can hear how drastic it is when I only have one of them playing. So that one's a little bit brighter. And then this one, it's a little bit darker and it sounds slowed. And that's pretty far to the left. All these sounds are in my kit, by the way, that is in the description. I definitely like to add groove to most hi-hats. So you can see here how I kind of did with that. I'm gonna turn this down just a tiny bit. Little subtle moves are really the key. 
See, in the other pattern is just straight all the way through. I only added, really, I only added groove to the one pattern, and the other one's just consistent and steady. I want, when this roll hits, I want to hear it in my left ear. You can see I have the roll here, but because the volume's messed with, and the volume's not messed with on this one, it's taken over my right ear. So I'm going to turn this down in the left. Turn it down even more. I have the filter that we automated to cut out the high end of the melody again, so it kind of signifies that something's changing. By changing the energy of it, the artist is gonna know this is going to a verse. Also, the kick went away, there's no crash, the open hat pattern changed, and the snare goes away. So really the only thing separating the most energetic part of the song, which is the second half of the verse from this hook, is that I have the filter still halfway on here. So it's cutting half of the highs that I cut off over 2000. And then there's no kick. I only have this kick on the eight bars in the hook. So when you're mixing and when you're sequencing, definitely focus on where you want to have the most energy. Because if you make an intro or a verse have a shit ton of energy, you're gonna have a really hard time making the hook sound bigger than that. So think about where do I want the most energy in the song to come and then dial it back from there would be my best tip on sequencing and also gauging and going about getting your levels right and getting the energy right in the mix. I'm going to let the part with the most energy play, which will be the hook. I'm going to let the first and second half of the hook play through while I'll show you guys what I would do to run it through a quick master. First thing I'll usually do on my master is roll off everything below 15 or 20 hertz. You're not going to hear it and it's just going to clog up energy. So I'll make a real sharp cut and cut up everything below that. And if you have big speakers, you'll definitely be able to hear the difference. And it's going to save you a lot of headroom to push things harder. So nothing's peaking bad, but you guys can see in this area from like 500 to like 2000, it's a little bit below the rest of the mix. So it might be a good idea to boost And with boosting. You kind of, it's better to do like a wide cue and when you're cutting frequencies it's definitely not that you can't do wide but it's definitely better to do narrow cuts to it so it doesn't sound too too thin i'm gonna just solo these areas and see what sounds best that sounds pretty good to me i can hear the roar of my 808 i like that part of the melody I like the snare. 1300 area is like where you're gonna get like the smack and the nice end of that clap and snare. And usually you can get some nice high end off your melody and some really nice of the low of what's gonna be on your hats. Um, between 12 and 1500 hertz or 12 and 1400, I usually find some area to boost in my mixes. So keep in mind, I didn't do anything more than one and a half dB here. You got some one, you got some half dB. I took three dB almost from the hats up here. I added three fourths of a dB down here to 93 Hertz. And all of these are very little moves, but you'll hear a pretty drastic difference when I solo it and when I unmute it. Okay, so I like where everything's at. Now I'm gonna start thinking about where we are and how we can get to zero dB. So let's see where we're at. Still at about negative three, so I got a lot of room to push the mix. So after the EQ, I'm gonna add this plugin that I put in my last free plugin video for you guys, which is Max One. It's definitely not like a be all end all in terms of limiting and making sure your beats don't peak. I like to throw it right before a limiter. And they got this nice preset called Beats Glue because it's really what you're trying to do on your master is glue everything together. So I'm going to mess with this preset because I'm pretty sure that it pushes it way too hard. Yeah, you can see immediately this reduction is at like 5 dB, which is way too much. When you're limiting or compressing on your master, you really don't want to hit more than 
maybe like one to two to three max db of reduction especially on a plugin like this that isn't that great sounding it just kind of gives like sheer volume i'm only going to get like maybe one to two db of reduction so in order to do that i'm just going to turn down this threshold <laughs> crazy because it actually is still hitting at negative three but you can hear how much volume this thing adds so it's really still not giving it any volume it's just kind of compressing the whole thing and you're getting more perceived volume it's not actually making your peak any higher so this is without it here's with it last stop is going to be a pro l so a good attack setting to have is 10 milliseconds i like my release as quick as possible um always make sure that you're below zero db so we're not going to peak and we're not going to go over one or i'm sorry we're not going to go over zero and then i'm just going to boost this gain until we hit zero and until it starts getting some reduction here i really only want maybe one db two max but probably closer to one db since we're already doing a little bit before it with the max one So you always want to listen to your ear, but having visual elements definitely help. I realized when I was looking at this limiter that the max one was just making it very compressed. I went back and lowered the threshold so that it's compressing less. And I also lowered the post gain a little bit and I ended up getting a little bit more gain out of this limiter. So you could add multiple limiters. Um, you could add some vintage EQ emulations. You could add another compressor. So less is more. Use more plugins to get less gain and just add a little bit. But the closer you mix to zero, if you're in that negative three to zero range, you're gonna have a lot easier time getting back to zero. So here's what our final mix sounds like. Be careful with mastering. You can do a lot more harm than good if you don't know what you're doing. So if it sounds squashed and overcompressed, it probably is. Try not to compress too much. I hope you guys saw a little bit of my workflow where I was bouncing back and forth between that max one and between my limiter and previously in my chain, just trying to get it to sound right, messing with multiple plugins. You can't just lock yourself into one plugin when you're mixing and mastering. You gotta try multiple solutions that affect one another and find what workflow works for you. So like I mentioned before, if you guys are interested in my drum kit, hit the description. If you're interested in getting a beat mixed by me and a one-on-one -on -one session breaking down everything I did, let me know. Uh, it's something I enjoy doing and it's something that everybody who's done it so far has got a lot out of it and I've definitely seen their mixes level up. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. Let me know in the comments what you guys wanna see next. And thank you very much for watching and peace.